It's interesting that a song about Christmas would be titled, Who Would Have Dreamed? Because if you think about it, we kind of enter into this season of like imaginary land, almost like fantasy land around Christmas time, don't we? It's defined by little elves and flying reindeer, but it's more than that. We actually kind of play the part. You know, we'll be nicer than normal, more generous than normal, more festive than our regular lives because for many of us, the season of Christmas is kind of dreamlike. And that's cool. That's the fun of the Christmas season. Um, What concerns me sometimes is when we start to get a little more serious and talk about the reason for the season, it feels like that conversation is just as dreamlike for people as the fantasy parts of the Christmas season that we enjoy. You know, I talk to a lot of people who, when they think about considering a life of faith in Jesus Christ, when they think about, you know, what Christmas represents in Jesus, they, they kind of feel like that whole Christianity thing is, you know, a lot of talk, but, but not a lot of action. A lot of theory, but not a lot of... Uh, not a lot of reality. They, they hear people talking about, you know, God's unconditional love and acceptance. But, you know, many times what they'll say is that they experience, especially in people of faith, you know, a harshness or a judgmentalism, you know, a, a cliqueishness, an exclusivity. And so things don't line up. They'll, they'll, they'll say, you know... We understand that that people talk about a, a, a God of timeless love and faithful commitment. So, you know, why is the divorce rate, for example, in the church, in the Christian faith, statistically just as high and no different as outside? Well, you know, what gives? Or they'll point to the, you know, the, the big issues in our society, the, the global poverty, the world peace level issues, and they'll They'll point to the fact that the the church is kind of nowhere in in those conversations. They're not the go-to frame of reference and solution to those problems. And they kind of feel like there's a lot of theory in this whole thing called Christianity, but, but not a lot of reality to back it up. Reminds me of one pastor who once said, you know, among Christians, they said, when all's been said and done, a lot more has been said than actually done. And I feel like for some of us, when we think about our lives and entertaining, opening them up to a faith in Christ, we're hesitant to do that because of the reputation that faith in Christ seems to to carry. And we feel like we'd be entering into just as much of a fantasy land as, as flying reindeer. If that's you, um, I want you to know that I can appreciate where you come from. I I can appreciate that that's your experience of the Christian faith. That's the conclusion that you've been drawing so far. At the same time, though, if that's you, I hope that you can appreciate, especially tonight, that that has nothing to do with what Christmas ultimately is all about. See, the Bible talks about Christmas in a very different way. In fact, in the biographical accounts of Jesus, more specifically in one called the Gospel of John, it begins by saying this. In uh, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. What the author's saying is that from the beginning of time, God interacted through what's called his word. His word being you know, really the, the, the words, the heart cry, the vision, the plan, the blueprint for life, the commands, the instructions, the values of God. The Bible says that you know, through the word of God, the heavens and the earth were created. The Bible says it you know, records throughout the Old Testament the way that You know, God led the people of Israel by his word. He sent prophets to kind of keep people on the straight and narrow through proclaiming his word. And for centuries, God interacted with people through his word. 
But then he skip ahead to verse 14. It says this, talking specifically of that first Christmas. It said the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the father full of grace and truth. Speaking of Christmas, the author in the Bible says the word became flesh or the way that we sing it in one Christmas carol, word of the father now in flesh appearing. That's what Christmas celebrates, that the word of God, his vision, his ideal, his blueprint for life, his values and instructions was actually manifest in a person who was born to this earth, the son of God named Jesus. And this person, as you track his life through the historical accounts of his life, um, for sure used words. He was known as a prolific teacher, but he did more than that. He lived a certain way. He modeled what those words meant. He showed people what love and true life looked like. And more than that, he painted the ultimate picture of others-oriented, compassionate, sacrificial, radical love when he hung on a cross and endured a torturous criminal's death for the sin of humankind. Only to be resurrected three days later so that his spirit could be alive with God today and available to invade the lives of any forgiven believer who would put their trust in him. Who would allow him to be that person, that agent in them. And at the end of the day, that's what we celebrate at Christmas. This moment in time where God no longer interacted exclusively through words. But through a person who manifests those words in the person of Jesus Christ. That's what's so significant about what we celebrate at Christmas. That's why Christmas matters so much because it's a defining moment in human history where God ceased to simply relate to humanity through his word and now made it possible to relate through to humanity through a person, through his son Jesus, both when he walked this earth and now through his resurrected spirit today so that that Jesus can interact with and work in our lives in spectacular ways. That's what Christmas represents in the birth of Christ, that moment in human history where God acted, where the word became flesh and that action started to actually speak louder than just words. And since that day, as people have not only heard about Jesus and heard what he had to say, but allowed his activity in their lives, they've been able to experience hurts being healed, habits and addictions being broken, relationships being restored and trajectories being set anew. And more than that, more than being able to experience the wonder of Jesus at work in people, Followers of Jesus since then have had the opportunity to experience his work through them in the lives of other people as well. As Jesus invades people and uses them as agents of transformation in other people's lives, bringing real hope, real care, real compassion, and real healing to people that they rub shoulders with, especially to those who need it the most. That's why Christmas is so significant because Jesus entered in. And when Jesus entered in, God began to engage with people in a way where actions could speak even louder than just words. And I realize in kind of clarifying that, that so far all I've used is words to do that. (laughs) And you're kind of thinking, here we go with more and more and more words. And so what I thought we'd do tonight is call a little bit of time out so that I can actually show you what this looks like in reality, in real people's lives. And tonight, just give you one picture of one story of one person in our community who's been experiencing the work of Christ in their lives 
over the last number of years. So take a look at the story of James Nada. When the tattoo artist is changing the smile on your arm, is changing the, the tattoo from a sad face to a happy face. Um, appreciate that's more than talk. That's the real activity of a real Jesus through real people into the lives of real people like you and like me. And gang, that's ultimately why we celebrate Christmas together. Because through that first Christmas, the word became flesh. And through Jesus, the activity of God can be made real in your life and mine. And we can experience a God where his actions can speak louder than any words ever could. And so I'm wondering on this Christmas, especially for those of us who've never been able to put our faith in the person of Jesus, whether you could use that kind of God in your life. And I wonder how many of us today are struggling in a loveless, dry marriage, wondering how much longer we can hold on. Or how many of us are just caught up in that rat race of competing and trying to keep up with you know, other people and pretending and acquiring and to the point of exhaustion? Or how many of us have had just about enough with that secret or not so secret habit or addiction? How many of us would love nothing more this Christmas than to be fundamentally different people than we've ever been able to be on our own? And I wonder if maybe this Christmas, maybe for the first time, you could open your heart, not just to the words about Jesus, but to the reality of the person of Jesus that Christmas celebrates. More than that, I wonder if we could allow that Jesus to be used like James's friend in other people's lives, in the Jameses of our lives. How many people do you and I know who would be desperate for that kind of hope and life-changing healing if only a Jesus through us could bring it to them? You know, what would it look like if we could bring that kind of love, that kind of care, and that kind of support to them? What would it be like if together we could change the, the tone, the reputation that God and faith has in our community from a, when all's been said and done, a lot more has been said and done, to a, wow, that's a God where actions speak way louder than any words. Wouldn't that be amazing? And yet that's, that's the question we ask all the time around here. That's the journey that we're on, simply trying to allow the person of Jesus to have a greater degree of his way in our lives so that he can work in us and he can work through us to bring the love and life-changing word of God into flesh like ours and into flesh like our lost and broken world. And this Christmas, I hope you know our heart that we would love nothing more than for you to join us together in that adventure as we experience the work of God in us and the work of God through us only because of the person of Christ who we celebrate and worship at Christmas. Because that's what Christmas is all about. It's about a God who loves us so much and went to such lengths that his actions in you and me and us together could speak louder than any words. Let's pray together. God, I'm thinking specifically tonight of people who, for whatever reason or another, like James, have considered you just fantasy, maybe real in other people's lives, but have been closed and skeptical of the possibility of your activity in theirs. God, help us to appreciate that that's what Christmas is all about. That's what Jesus is all about. And I pray, God, by your spirit, 
that you would open our hearts in a new way to your activity in our lives. And that you wouldn't just stop by working in us. You would flow through us and others could see the change and the difference that you're making. And others would be compelled to follow you as a result. And that over time, your reputation and fame would spread as a God who delivers, as a God who's real, as a God whose actions speak louder than words. So that when all's been said and done, Way more in and through us has been done than said because of the reality of the Jesus that we now worship at Christmas. We thank you for this time and we pray all these things in his name. Amen.